Today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we are talking about EDDM, every door direct mail from the post office. If you use it or you don't, you know you want to talk about it. It's a great program, and if you want to be junk mail, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? I hope you have a uh, great week. I hope everything's going great for you, too. I hope everything's starting to pick up. Either way, if it's your first time here, go back, watch whatever you want. We got a lot of episodes, uh, almost 80 hours of content. Go back, binge, watch. Send me a text. Tell me you binge. I no- love nothing more than that. I think the record right now is 16 episodes in a day. I think that's 16 episodes. That equals eight hours. They said they listened to 16 episodes in a day. They worked for like close to nine hours with drive time and between everything they want. Listen to uh, 16 full episodes. Anyway, try to beat the binge. That's that's crazy. Uh, but anyway, if it's not your first time here, you've been here a bunch, you've liked the comments and you thumbs up the video on YouTube, you've commented, and of course, you buy your supplies through me. Cheap, shameless plug. <clears throat> Thank you. It is because of you that I get to uh, buy name brand uh, Frank Rave sandals to wear in the summer. If you haven't checked them out, they're at the store at windowcleaner.com. If you want to order through me, my number is 862-312-2026. Throw everything in your cart or I can put it in your cart. Either way, just text me at that number. Let me know everything's golden and I would love to put your order in because it's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. I do really, really enjoy you guys. People tell me what brand name stuff I can buy, but they also tell me that they get something out of the podcast, which is cool because I'm talking to a little dot in my computer. So if you ever got anything from the podcast, let me know. That's awesome. And by the way, if you're going to the huge convention, we're starting to do lives on that. It's still going on. It's in Atlanta this August, thehugeconvention.com. I hope you go and I hope you meet me. Or wait, let me rephrase that. I hope I meet you. Who cares if you meet me? Uh, because that, another thing, I love to uh, meet people that uh, get a chance to uh, dig the episodes. So anyway, there you go. This week's episode, uh, I do want to give a couple shout outs. Dave Ringstaff, what's up, man? Chase Ziegler, of course. Logan Roddy, what is up, man? By the way, Logan, every time, uh, Logan is a cool kid. He's part of the nation, right? Uh, orders with me. Every time I put his order in, I'm always like, dude, he's got a wrestler name. Logan Roddy to the, anyway, there you go. Logan, if you're watching, your name is awesome. Uh, so this week, we're talking about EDDM, and I kind of babbled about it before. Yes, it's the junk mail program from the post office. We actually got this idea from Cassidy Morrison, another one of the cool kids, uh, who brought it up. And if you have ideas for shows, shoot me a text, 862-312-2026, and let me know uh, ideas for shows. I don't use all of them because it's hard sometimes to put Like, can I put all my thoughts down to 30 minutes? But give me ideas, guys. I really, really would appreciate that. This one comes from Cassidy Morrison, uh, and he wants to know a little bit about EDDM. He's talking about this program that he's going to get into. He's never done one. How can he do it? So let's talk about it. I've done an EDDM uh, a while ago, probably a year, year and a half ago, I did an episode on EDDM, and I don't know why I haven't done one. Since then, EDDM, every door direct mail from the post office is awesome. Let me explain what it is. So it's a program that the post office actually came up with, oh man, six, seven years ago probably now. I don't actually know those and no one cares either way what the date is, but it came out a long time ago and uh, it's awesome. What it is is basically a blanket mailing. So instead of giving them the addresses or paying for a list to get to send it out, you're just sending it to everybody on a carrier route. How do you find a carrier route? It's awesome. It's all on the website. Uh, I'm going to read it off to you, but it's uh, uh, eddm.usps.com forward slash eddm. It's like a whole bunch of other stuff, but that'll get you there. It's quick. What you do is you type an address in to this site. It's got a map. And it shows you all the carrier routes, meaning one truck, one person has this one route. Say it's route 1234. And you like that route, you want to send to that. You see how many pieces are in that route, 
you give them that many pieces, it has to be bundled and everything, and we'll talk about that. And they just give it to every house they go to, they drop it off. It's the quintessential junk mail. But the thing is, if done right, it's huge. You can get really, really good ROI on this. Uh, a lot of people do it with success. Not only do a lot of people do it, but Chris Lamborghini's, Lamborghini's from uh, WCR, if you know him, by the way, he wrote a book called The Marketing uh, Window Cleaning Marketing Blueprint, which talks all about this. Also, get that book. It's free at windowcleaner.com. Let me know and I'll shoot you a link. Um, but he talks all about EDDM as being probably the number one thing that he does or did in his business to get it to where it was. And the fun thing about EDDM is you can do it wrong and you can do it right. So sometimes you fear people like, oh, I did it. I did EDM, it doesn't work. And you hear other people like, yeah, I'm rocking crazy ROIs on EDDM. And there are right ways and wrong ways to do it, and uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, and if you guys got suggestions, go to YouTube on this video. If you're already watching on YouTube, comment if you've done it. If you haven't, just comment. Comments help everything for ranking. Hopefully, we can have a better conversation. And uh, we don't get many comments on the YouTube side of it. More people listen uh, by far, which is awesome either way. But the EDDM program itself, there's a couple specifications. And I'm going to read this because I wrote it down because... For once, <laughs> there's going to be some kind of knowledge in the podcast I do instead of just me babbling. But here it is. Uh, the lowest price that you can get with EDDM is 19.1 cents per piece. Now, technically, that's not the lowest. You can go even lower than that depending on uh, programs and things like that. But that's the average. 19 cents a piece. That's crazy. Crazier yet when you find out that the piece... The piece that you have to send can't be little. It has to be big because it has to be easier for the postal people to put mail on. The minimal size for an EDDM is 11 and a half long or six and a half, I'm sorry, 6.125 high. So you can have different dimensions as long as one of them is that. The max is 15 inches long or 12 inches high. 15 by 12 if you really want to go that big. That's giant. That's like a tarp. Uh, you don't want to go too big because then it actually feels uncomfortable in people's hands. But uh, that main size at 11 and a half and 6.125 is a great size. But you're sending large pieces. The downsides, you're sending them to everybody. Um, you have to send at least 200 and up to 5,000 pieces per day. So per mailing. The 5,000 cap in this program is locked, but they have another program if you want to send more than 5,000 a day. Uh, you have to have them bundled. Uh, that is pretty easy to do. We'll talk about that. Um, it has to be in a flat, and a flat is those white post office containers that everybody uses for everything that's not post office. <laughs> you know the white ones? Let's say post, postal office USPS property, and everybody uses them to like, store coffee filters yeah those ones um you also have to drop them off at the post office with the zip code so that part i found a little bit cumbersome sometimes depending on how large that you want to do in uh an area there are services for that so you can go that route but you got to drop them off so if you're going into one two three four five area code and that's where your route is those have to be dropped off there so if you're right on the edge and you got some in you know one zip code and another and the other zip code that touch, those have to actually be dropped off separate. Something to think about. Um, but, and check me if I'm wrong on that, I think it's actually 5,000 pieces per zip code. Yeah, it is, per day per zip code. So if you got two of them, you can actually send out 10,000 pieces in a day. That's a lot of pieces. Like, logistically, 5,000 pieces is a lot. And again, we'll, we'll get to all that. We'll get to all that. I'm giving you the boring specifics right now. One other thing is you have to have a an insignia on the letter or on the piece, the postcard. And it has, you'll get it on the website. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. But it's got to be on everyone, and that's the address. And it's, uh, you know, when you get a piece that says um, uh, not even current resident, it won't have your actual name. It'll just say current resident, something along those lines. Uh, it has to be that because it still has to be labeled even if they get sent out. So things to think about. Again, that's all on that EDDM website. 
by the USPS. Um, it's all there. It all explains things. Bundling is every 50 pieces you put together with a rubber band and it has to have a cover sheet. And again, this program online is so easy. When you go in and you go and you put, say you're doing 1200 pieces, okay? It's going to tell you, these are all the cover sheets you need per bundle. So you'll, you know, if you have uh, five bundles of one, you'll have to print five of that one, but it gives you all the cover sheets with everything on there. So easy. All you gotta do is buy a big bag of rubber bands like Pablo Escobar does, and uh, and you're good to go. And then you bundle it, uh, the best way to bundle, by the way, uh, rubber band one way, rubber band the other way. So two rubber bands per piece that holds them, nothing falls out. It's great. So um, you gotta check it too. I think you can actually bundle up to 100 pieces, not 50, or they went from 25 to 50, something like that. That's where the time is. The reason it's 19 cents per piece is you do all the work. They literally, because you have to put it in a mailbox or a postal flat is what they call it, like this uh, kind of box. All they do is they look at it and go, oh, these are going to one, two, three, four, five, and they set it literally on that carrier person's truck. So when the person's going there and they got, you know, you've ever seen them when they drive by and they grab your mail and then they grab a piece out of a box and put it together, that's somebody doing EDDM. It's so easy. We do all the hard work so that there's zero labor. They're going to every address anyway. All they got to do now is just put an extra piece in the mail. That's why it's so cheap. We kind of do the work and it's not hard. All you do is bundle things, put it together, put a couple rubber bands on and you're good to go. But if you have what uh, I considered or called my office goddess, they do that kind of stuff uh, every day. They were bundling so that whenever we did want to go somewhere, okay, we need this many. We would just go and grab how many uh, bundles we need. And then, of course, there's always an odd number and nothing ever lines up. So you count out that one, put it in there. And again, the cover sheet tells you this bundle has 21 pieces. These bundles have 50. This one has 50. This one has 50. It all prints up super, super easy. But again, you do the work, but you save a bunch of money doing it. So super beneficial. The big thing is, is where people can kind of go wrong on this is they'll send the wrong pieces. And that's the thing. You don't want to necessarily send a billboard. No one cares about a billboard. No one's going to actually read your piece. Now, I get people all the time that are, in, oh yeah, right. You're just bad at design. That's why nobody re Think about when you get the mail. Just think about it right now. When you go get the mail, because every one of us does every single day, think about it. When you get the mail, there's always some kind of little pamphlet in there or some kind of postcard or something junk mail related. And what do you do? You glance at it. You kind of eyes go to the logo, see which company it is and the big headline on the front. If I'm not into Bed Bath & Beyond, I'm not going to go and open the piece. I'm not going to read every bit of it, right? And people are just not that into your services as much as you think they are. So what you need to do on these pieces is design something that's catchy, nice and colorful, but yet is so simple to understand that when they look at it, they're going to see, oh, I don't really recognize the logo, or maybe I do, and then boom, they're going to look at the headline. The headline has to bring them in. The headline and the picture have to bring them in. If they want, then they'll flip it over and look at the info. But do not do a bill, hey, you know, on the front page you say, pressure washing, window cleaning, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, gutter repairs, concrete cleaning, hardscapes, dog pooper. You can't put everything. It's the same concept when you're talking about a wrap on a vehicle. Don't put everything. By the way, a bunch of guys, I don't know if they're taking their Trump money or what, but a lot of people have been doing wraps and you guys' wraps are looking amazing. Amazing. Keep it simple. Simple gets people to look. That's the same thing with the EDDM. One side of your EDDM should be absolutely a picture and one line of text or two words. Really. And I'm telling you, some of the best postcards I ever had was like this squirrel that was like, looks like a lion. And it just said like, clean gutters. I said that out. It was just a big picture. Everybody stops and goes, what the heck is that? It's a lion squirrel, tiger squirrel. They're going to read it. You stop and you get them. It's just like a header on an email. It's very, very important. 
that's what you send out. And then on the back, you can have a little bit of information, not crazy. Make sure your website, your phone number are huge on the back. A little bit of information, little. People are not reading the mail. Window cleaning, pressure washing. I have, I could break it down to 10 services, I think, that we do. And I always put two. Just that. If it's gutter season, gutter cleaning, window cleaning. Because they're going to call. If they call because it's simple or they look at our website because it's simple, I then can have the up, uh, upsell opportunity. So kiss. Keep it simple, smarty. There you go. Um, but the other thing is is the WCRA uh, is an organization that's run by windowcleaner.com. It's like 99 bucks to join right now. You get all the free templates you want. These are already split tested templates. I literally use those. I designed my first one and went, this is dumb. I let's, let's, let's talk about this. If you do a template, you have to split test the template. The time when people go wrong is they do one thing and they go, wow, I love this because they made it. They spent a lot of time looking at it. They send it out and it doesn't do anything. Well, how do you know anybody likes that? You're not your target market. Your eyes aren't your target market. The emotion's not your target market. So you have to split test. And I'm talking about split testing like five different things from different colors to different words to different... Nobody got time for that. I go to the WCRA. I download a template that I like. They've already been split tested in business with Chris's company. This is already the best option. Is the background red? It's red for a reason. Because they tested blue, yellow, green, and pink. Red did best. Right? So I get a template. I do my editing. I have them do the editing. And then that is my template that I can send out. And I'll print a bunch of them. If you create your own, I'm telling you, unless you are... Even then, you could be in graphic design. You're probably great at what you do. But you're not in maybe marketing graphic design unless you are in marketing. And I doubt any, if not one or two of you are. So go get a template from somebody else. You're going to have better results. And that's the biggest thing. The ROI is if I can have one more person book every time I mail, one more person. That changes the ROI immensely. We'll talk about ROI in a minute. But making a postcard that's catchy, that people can see, that all of that, that is the key. It has to draw people in. It has to make people stop, flip it over, look at the info, right? That's the key to it. The size is also a key to it because here's the thing. When you go, well, I don't really want the biggest one because then it's literally just uncomfortable. You're like you're holding this big tarp, you know? But, but... If you have a piece that's big enough, the 15 by 12 is the largest, 11 and a half by six and a quarter, great size, right? So, and those are the minimums. So you do both of those and you're golden. But what it is, is it's big enough. Again, 11 and a half is like a sheet, a size of a piece of paper. But it's so big that they don't normally put it in the bundle of mail. You ever see when your mail is there, there's big things wrapped around the outside that kind of sandwich the letters and the letters are all on the inside? That's what they do. They take your piece and they wrap everything in the inside of it. So the nice thing is, is they almost have to look at it because it's holding all their other letters. It's kind of, kind of clever to do. Uh, that's why those big pieces work. You know, a small postcard can kind of get lost in there if you're ever doing a 4x6. Again, you can't do that EDDM. But if you are sending those, uh, and I do monthly, they can get lost in there. I understand that. But I also like the smallness and the quaintness and the littleness and the personal side of those little ones. But when I'm doing EDDM, man, I'm sending, I'm sending a billboard. And it's the same price, which is crazy. Again, it just takes the mail person to grab it and put it on. That's why they're so cheap. You're still paying them 19 cents to just do this. So, makes sense. But what do you put on the back? If you notice a lot of these um, that have already been made, they always have a little bit of information in the back. Your contact info, that's the biggest part. Your contact info is the um, bread and butter of everything, right? Because if they get to your website, your website, if it's amazing, should sell them. Again, I get probably two calls a week for this, but uh, Justin Monk is the guy I always talk about. M-O-N-K. 
Justin Monk. He's on Facebook, Monk SEO, but just search Justin Monk. He's in all the Facebook groups for window cleaning, pro window cleaning and all that. Super good dude. Tell him that I said what's up because I always love when he calls me. He's like, ah, another one said they heard about me. I'm like, cool, man. He's a super good dude and he does amazing work. But anyway, if they do a website for you, it's going to blow people away. If they get to your website, that's what sells them. The EDDM, most people aren't going to just be like, well, I'm going to choose this guy right now. Especially in today's age, they're going to go to the website. Let the website sell. Don't have an Angel Fire or Hotmail website or whatever those old... Ver- just get a new website. Get a website before you get a, a truck wrap. Website is it. Anyway. Um, so what do you have on there? On the back of every EDDM, you have to have the placard, which is the bottom... Uh, quarter of the sheet has to have your return address, it has to have this weird insignia thing, and then it has to have the uh, general name. And again, that's all on the website at uh, EDDM, I'm sorry, EDDM.USPS.com slash EDDM. Um, Put all those on there, it's in the bottom corner of it, and that makes it legal. Then you have a little info above it, and then you have your bigger info on the left side. Now, In that info, I will always, always put coupons. And again, there's people who go, I don't discount anything. Okay, cool. Put the coupon, broken coupon line around some information. Put them, like, if if you're the most elite company and you pride yourself in being the most expensive and elite out there, then you know what? In your coupon box, you put... Screens, tracks, sills, all included. Or, uh, you know, um, free booty wearing, whatever. You put something in there, but those coupons are always traditionally on there. People will always look because that's where they're looking. Oh, this is kind of cool. They're always going to look there because that's going to tell them a price. That's going to tell them something fiscal on your piece because a lot of times... People, if they've used a window cleaner before, they got to see where you stack up, or at least close. If they've never used a window cleaner, which is more of the case, they got no idea what it costs. That's the people that call you and, oh, your your quote, you know, I looked at everything, looks like uh, you'll be at uh, two ninety nine for inside and outs. Oh gosh, no, I thought it'd be more like twenty dollars. You've never had it done. I can't, I can't literally turn the key in my truck for twenty dollars. It just doesn't make sense. So. Having that on there is optimal. And here's what I always put. A 20 window special. I will put a gutter something. Even if it's a starting at, something lets them know a price. I hate the starting uh, starting at because I feel like if I see a starting at, it makes me feel like there's always a catch. Oh yeah, well it starts at $2.99, but it'll be $4.99 for me. And then you kind of defeat the purpose and then their negative thoughts control your piece. So I don't put starting at. But what I will do is, depending on the time of year, I'll put a 20 window special. If we've talked about the 20 window special, but the 20 window special is just a general thing. Hey, 20 windows inside and outside, 199. That's like a good non-busy time of year number. 20 windows inside and outside, 249. Whatever yours is, uh, and busier season goes up 299, whatever you're going to be charging. From there, you can then upsell more windows or whatever. Our minimum, we always say, is 20 windows or less 299 because people then get an actual number. They get an actual price, right? Again, this price does not include storm windows. If you're in storm window area, uh, you know, call for an exact quote, whatever, whatever you put on there. But put something on there. If it's gutter cleaning, put gutter cleaning. Gutter cleaning. You know, 2,000 square foot house or less, $199. Whatever your prices are, who cares what mine are. Put it on there. Those coupon spots will always translate to people's eyes. If you can get them to that spot, it's the last thing they look at before they look at your number to call you. Always. But here's the big debate. The biggest debate on EDDM is not if you should do it, It's not if it works, it's not anything. What it is, is should you put expiration dates on there? And I don't. Now, expiration dates are huge in marketing because they create a sense of urgency. 
Uh, it expires in two weeks. I got to get it booked, right? Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit. And then they look at oh, it. expires tomorrow. I got to call them now. But here's the thing. EDDM doesn't always work the way that we want. And I lost a batch early on when it really did cost me a lot in my, you know, it's like I got this stuff. I printed it up. The expiration dates were too short. By the time we got them and by the time we waited, they were already expired. I still sent them out, but we didn't get a good response <laughs> because people like looked at the fine print and they were like, oh, these are expired, probably. But again, if they're expired, people still call, can I still use this? We did get an ROI, but not a good one. So I don't put expiration dates. The other thing is, is that I can use one template, never change anything, never forget it, but always do the same thing. And I always can, depending on times too, you can put, uh, you know, uh, valid through this month or something along those lines where it creates urgency, but yet even if they wait till the next month and they can't really tell when it got sent out, so it's kind of there, but it's not, do something like that. I don't like expiration dates. If you do, comment, let me know why, but I don't. I don't dig expiration dates, so I don't do that. But a big thing is when to when to send. When do you send EDDM? And it's it's January. I gotta send ED. No, no. EDDM is again just like any other marketing, and you only send it out when you're busy. Now, if you are a listener of the show anyway, you already have a marketing calendar, right? Marketing calendar. If you do, your EDDM's on there. EDDM will start the day that it is starting to be busy. So remember, in the very beginning of a season, spring or fall, you're kind of slow, 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 and then all of a sudden, boom. If you go crazy for a day or two, send out your EDDM on day three if there's good weather in the forecast. EDDM, if there's good weather in three days, for three days, send it out. Because I've sent out EDDM and all of a sudden it's just rained the whole day. And I'm like, how did that happen? It didn't say it was going to rain. And all of a sudden people get a postcard on the day it's just raining. It's not in their brain. They're out in the rain reading their mail like, oh, not doing that. And it ruins it, I'm telling you. Weather uh, really helps in that. Um, but send it out when you're busy. If you send it out when you're busy, you strike when the iron is hot. I know that's corny, but it really, really does work. The big thing right now, we're recording this at the end of June. The big thing is you should or could be booked through July already because of what you sent when it was busy, right? That's how you fill up summer as opposed to trying to advertise in the summer. And I always put this example out there, but trying to sell a cheeseburger to a vegan, like the best discount, the best, you know, timing, the most colorful ad that has the right colors and the right words, you're not going to sell it to them because they just don't want it. It's the same thing like selling window cleaning and the time it's not. If it's January and you're watching this, don't send EDDM out, but get it all printed for when you have to send it out. That brings us to the next point, is you have to have EDDM printed in advance to send it out. And that's why I don't put expiration dates on things, but print it all out, start stacking it so that when the time comes, you already know your routes, it's already printed, all that work is done, they're in the flats, you're like, oh man, yesterday was killer. Oh, today's killer. I'm going to get those things out tomorrow. All you got to do is pick up the boxes. Don't think about it. Get it out there. And that starts your marketing calendar. It's a great program. Really, really, really is. The big thing with um, success in this though, and I'll tell you one other thing that people do that ruins it. If you've ever heard anybody who didn't have good luck in an EDDM program, hold me to it. I guarantee this is the reason but they sent everything out once. Well, of course. I'm not sending the same people the same. Yes, you are. Here's how it works. When you send it out the first time, you send it to, we'll say, a thousand people, just to make it easy, right? Send that piece out to a thousand people. Your ROI may be 0.25. Maybe it's a great card, 0.5. So now, all those other people, they didn't look at it, they didn't give it to, they threw it away. Next week, you send the same thing out to those 1,000 people. All of a sudden, your ROI now is 0 0.5, 0 0.75. It's creeping up. You send it out the third time within another week, and your ROI will be higher than it was the first time, guaranteed. And the reason is, is because people keep seeing it, right? If they see it and they throw it away in subliminally, they look at their windows anytime within that week, 
They're like, oh yeah, I saw that. Where did I see that? Like, I, uh, Boom, you send it to them. Now it's in their brain again. Now they look at their window. Sometime, even if they threw your thing away and didn't even read it, they're thinking about it. Man, there's it. You send them the third one. So every time you send anything, any lists or uh, routes that you pick, imagine three times. You're going to mail that three times in three weeks. And I'm telling you, that's not too much. Because you're just creating an ATM at that point. You need to send multiple times the same exact piece. Don't change it to the same. So when you're sending to a thousand people, don't think, well, oh, I can send it to, you know, I got 5,000 pieces. I can send that to 5,000 different people. No, you have 5,000 pieces that you can send three times to one and three times to the 2,000. Wait, no. Do your math. I don't know, 750? What is it? What is the other one? Anyway, those thousand people, and then you got to send it three times. You have to. That's the big thing. You're <laughs> I'm so bad at math. <sighs> yes, that's why there's a calculator on my desk and on my phone and on my computer, because I'm bad at math. But figure it out. That's what you're doing. Three times send it out. That is how you do. That is your split millings, and that's how you get your ROI. And those ROIs can be as high as... A percent. I've heard guys getting a percent. I think our best one, we may have had over a percent ROI, which is crazy when you really, really think about it. Because each piece that you send costs you 19 cents. And if 1% of those people come back to you, that's going to be, what is your minimum? Or not even minimum. What's your average ticket? Two ninety nine. That means for every you know, 1%, every 100 pieces you send out on a good ROI of 1%, one person's paying you. So every 100 pieces sent, which costs you $19 in postage and maybe printing, maybe $25, maybe $30, you're getting $2.99 back and that customer forever. Maybe you upsell them. Maybe that's a $1,000 person. The ROI can be amazing, amazing. But you got to do it right. You got to do it right. I know people, and I know of somebody uh, that took everything. He, he's calling me. It was middle of winter. He just didn't. He didn't plan right. Nothing against him, but uh, things weren't going. He's like, dude, I'm so broke. I literally have five thousand dollars left in my name. I'm like, well, you know, hunker down. You'll 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 save that. You know, and and that may get you through winter. Just tighten up and try everything you can. And he goes, no, better than that. What I did was I took that five thousand dollars. I bought all my 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 uh, pieces, and I got all of my pricing, and I sent them all out. I said, "What? I sent out five thousand dollars worth of that was my postage and my printing. That was all five thousand dollars I have. I literally have like twenty eight dollars left." I said that was an awful plan. What do you mean? Like, I'm, dude, people are getting these great ROIs not on the first mailing. And he did. I never heard from him again, unfortunately. So he's just one of those guys that um, hit a hard time and didn't make it. So hopefully you guys do. I babbled long enough. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm going to give you another shameless plug and a code here for 5% off. But if you like any of the shows, if you want to give a virtual high five or you just are lazy and you want me to put the order in, I'm totally happy with that. That's how I make my cheddar and how I can name, buy brand name Q-tips. Huh? Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So call me, text me, say, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I love those ones. It's easy for everybody all around. And this week's code is going to be Q-tip because I just said it. <laughs> Q-tip is the code. Uh, let me know that and you will get 5% off your order and free shipping. Uh, we can't stack discounts. So don't try if you already have a discount because you paid for a membership or something like that. I wish I could, but I can't. Uh, let me know. I still would love to put your uh, orders in. Big or small, it does not matter. Literally had somebody call yesterday for an $18 order. Dude, I love it. I love it. Thank you. All the orders count. Um, I really do appreciate it. Try ADDM. You're going to love it. Hopefully, you make a billion dollars with it. But more importantly, hopefully, you guys go out there and uh, you're epic.